welcome to a new episode of the Wool and Twine Fiber Studio Knitting Podcast. My name is Jule and I'm the dye and maker behind Wool and Twine Fiber Studio, which is a small creative space located here in northern Germany where I play with botanical dyes and natural yarns. Um, yeah, welcome back to a new episode. It's terribly gloomy today, so I hope the light will kind of stay this way and that I will be able to get you through the episode. But it's time for our November collection preview and I hope I don't sound like a broken record saying this every time in every update or episode. But this is uh, the type of video that I like to record to show you everything that I dyed over the past couple of weeks um, and that will be available for the new collection launch. So how this works is that I usually work on new yarns for a couple of weeks and botanically dye them um, and then they get released on one certain date uh, in my shop and then you can purchase them um, until they are sold out. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I like to record these videos to show you the colorways in natural light and movement because I feel this is the best way to showcase them um, rather than just photographing them in, you know, artificial light or something. I feel like with natural dyes this is a bit special so it's always good to showcase them in uh, natural lighting. So, um, while you're watching this I will probably be at the Barcelona Knits Festival um, in Barcelona which is super nice and exciting and I'm, I can't wait uh, for this trip because these past couple of weeks have been a bit of a whirlwind and you know the festive season is upon us so um, it's always incredibly busy over here. I don't know how it is for you but for us uh, the Christmas season is always very very busy. Um, but yeah for this uh, month I prepared a lot of specials again um, to celebrate the upcoming holiday season and without further ado uh, let me share you, with you what I prepared over the past couple of weeks. So as a quick base overview, um, this time is a bit of a special update because we're going to uh, restock a, a very rare limited edition yarn um, that we introduced I think early this year. Or was it last year even? I don't really remember, but it's um, a limited edition yarn that I actually sourced the fleeces for and got it spun at a local mill. It traveled minimally, it was minimally processed, and it's a woolen spun, which I found very appropriate for the season. Um, I'm actually wearing it right now, but I'm going to show it to you more in depth um, once we get to it and I'll showcase the colorways. But yeah, we're going to restock our limited edition locally sourced and spun yarn roots in two weights. Um, and we're going to restock our oversock base. Um, there are a couple of reasons on why we're having a big restock. One of them being also a mystery knit along being hosted in December that I'm ex incredibly excited about. If you've been following along on Instagram, you might have seen um, me post about it already, but I'm going to tell you everything about it later in this video. And I'm going to add timestamps so you can jump to whatever section is of interest for you. Um, but yeah, that's also why we're restocking over sock and we'll have a big special kind of kit again. <laughs> and what we're also launching is our festive winter box um, for this year, which has become kind of a classic here at the Wool and Twine Fiber Studio. Um, and this is my interpretation of a festive special um, for the holidays, whatever you might be celebrating at the end of the year. And that's also why I'm not calling it Christmas because, you know, not everyone celebrates Christmas, so I kind of want to keep it neutral. But yeah, it's kind of a festive box that is very special every year and that I curate every year uh, with different makers who share my values and ethics. Um, and I'm super excited about this one and can't wait to share more about it later in this video. Um, so yeah, as mentioned, there will be timestamps, so if you're mainly interested in the winter box you can also just jump to the section but I recommend sticking around because we dyed some really exciting colorways um, on the other bases as well so I guess without further ado let me start showing you some colorways. 
All right, um, first off, I'm going to show, show you the colorways on our roots um, base, which, as mentioned in the intro, is a completely locally sourced and locally spun yarn um, that is very special to me because the process is very labor intensive and very um, special, you know, witnessing every step from beginning to end product. And I'm I'm super proud that we were able to have this batch and um, so I don't have to ramble too much about it and rave about everything, um, this space. Uh, I have a whole video that I'm going to link down below and in the little info card over here, um, where I share everything about the process, how we sourced the fleeces, how everything went. And I also have a lot of pattern suggestions for, um, this yarn, uh, that are also linked in the video and that, that I'm also going to put down below. Um, just in case you're curious, but as a little recap, this is a woolen spun yarn made from 100% local Romney fleeces from a single flock here in the north of Germany. And um, it is a very special yarn because it is a woolen spun, which means that it's incredibly squishy and airy. Um, this is the undyed colorway, which is a beautiful creamy grayish, I would say something between a gray and a beige. Um, but yeah, this is the undyed shade and we're going to have this available in a four ply fingering weight that's 400 meters per 100 grams and a DK weight with 285 meters per 100 grams, which might sound a little bit lightweight for a DK weight, but because it's so plump and actually blooms a lot, um, it definitely is a true DK weight gauge wise. So technically you get a lot for your money because you get a lot of meter rich um, for a standard DK weight gauge. Plus um, with this space, because it's spun at a mill that has a relatively old machine park um, and cannot do everything as modern and precisely, um, most of the skeins are heavily overweight. So they are not 100 grams, but they some of them are 105, some are even 115. So they are all usually a little bit more than 100 grams. So you actually get a lot for your money. That being said, this is a limited edition yarn. So once you're uh, planning your project you want to make, please make sure that you buy enough skeins because once they're sold out, I cannot restock these. I cannot re-spin this to the exact same type of yarn. So yeah, I would not like you to <laughs> lose a round of yarn chicken. So um, it's definitely good to check meter rich before. And even though I'm saying that the skeins are heavily overweight, um, it might make sense to not, you know, be too, uh, yeah, to, you, you should still be careful to buy enough yarn and not like bet too much on the overweight skeins, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, it's a limited edition yarn um, spun from local fleeces and I'm absolutely in love with it. It's a bit more on the, um, like rustic side, not that this is like extremely rustic. For me, I can totally wear this against my neck. There is no issue to this. But you know, how someone experiences softness is something incredibly individual. And I've been talking about this a million times on my channel. So <laughs> I hope uh, you get my point by now that I cannot decide for you whether this is rustic to you or not. H however, what I can do is kind of compare to other yarns and I would say, this kind of feels similar to uh, Tuku wool fingering, which is a Finnish uh, yarn um, that is also wool and spun. Um, but make sure that you check the Tuku wool fingering, not the Tuku wool um, sock, because that one has nylon and has a different handle. So yeah, I would say on the level of rusticness, it's almost like Tuku wool, maybe a touch more rustic, but not um, a whole lot. So it's beautiful and it kind of, it's also why it's called Roots, is because it resembles the slightly more rough nature of uh, our weather here in the north. So that's what I really like about it. So yeah, this is Roots in its natural undyed state. And I'm trying to actually up the light a little bit because it's so gloomy and I hope you can still see the colors later. But yeah, this is the undyed shade and this is actually also what I'm wearing right now. Um, I'm wearing the fingering weight version um, and this is the Fernwood sweater by Tanya Bale. I don't know if it focuses right now, but um, 
This is a beautiful color work sweater by Tanya Bali, who's one of my favorite knitwear designers. Um, but yeah, this is the Fernwood and this is the undyed shade knitted up. And I've used the colorway Open for my contrasting color. Um, and I used the fingering weight version and this is so nice and warm and yeah, just absolutely lovely. So um, I'm gonna live in this probably for the next couple of weeks while we're getting really cold days over here. Once I come back from Barcelona, of course. But yeah, I also have a whole reverie pro project linked um, down below about this sweater in case you're curious about size, yardage, whatever. Um, I have added everything to my Ravelry project just in case you want to check that out maybe. Um, but yeah, I definitely highly, highly recommend this pattern because it's very cleverly designed in a way that, for example, you don't see the increases in the yoke because they are very cleverly designed into the color work pattern, which I really appreciate when designers do that. So makes me very happy every time and it was a delight to knit. I was making this on vacation, I believe last year, um, and it was just so much fun to make. And the color work goes down to the sleeves even. And yeah, I just really like the details and everything about it. It's very nice and also fun to knit, so. But yeah, this is the undyed colorway and to actually be following it up, this is the Auburn colorway which is what I used, are you focusing? Yeah, which is what I used for my contrasting color. It looks a bit more reddish this batch, but actually if you hold it next to um, my sweater, it's pretty similar. So these are the two colorways that I used for my sample. And even though, this is also one thing I wanted to mention, even though this is a very dark color combined with a very light one, um, I did not experience any kind of bleeding. That's also because we ca uh, care a lot about rinsing our yarns very, very well. However, every water situation at your home can be different and can affect natural dyes and at some point. So I recommend to always, always, always swatch. Also swatch the color work um, in the colors you want to use and block them uh, in the same circumstances that you block all of your knits um, and that you want to block your finished project just so you can make sure that there's no um, issues with the water or anything. And so there is no like alteration in your finished project, which would be a shame. But yeah, what also happens sometimes with these very heavy colors is that they can bleed a little bit more than the lighter ones, just because natural dyes are not made to be a dye. <laughs> so sometimes there's a little bit of a fallout, but we really take care of the rinsing process. However, with very saturated colors and with greens and blues, I always recommend to wear a dark color underneath because it can always be that the, for the first wears, there is a little bit of color crock off. And I would not recommend wearing a white t-shirt under a really saturated dyed um, sweater just because you might get, you know, you might, might be out in the rain and get wet and, you know, there might be a little bit of dye residue that would be coming off. So, um, with the very saturated colors, it's always recommendable to swatch, especially for color work, and to always make sure that you don't necessarily wear a white shirt underneath because, you know, humidity, sweat, anything can actually affect a little bit of dye crock off. Um, this sounds way more horrible than it is. You can see in my sweater that this does not normally happen. I just want to make you aware of the fact that we are working with natural materials over here. Um, another really nice project that you can make in this color combo, and I promise I'm gonna share more colorways soon, <laughs> but I wanted to share this one with you as well, um, because this is from this batch that we actually just dyed. And this is a swatch for um, the Daft Days cardigan by Rebecca Clow of the Crea Bayer, who also has a podcast here on YouTube. And I had been hoping that we could finish a sample in time for the video. Um, but it was a bit ambitious to be fair because we had another spontaneous idea, but I still wanted to show you how nice it looks in the DK weight version of Roots. So this is just a tiny beginning of the Death Days cardigan, but I think it's very sweet and I hope for this one to maybe become my Christmas celebration holiday 
cardigan maybe. Let's see how it goes. But yeah, this is the Duff Days and I can't wait to show you how it's gonna turn out once it's finished. Um, but yeah, this is the same color combo of Auburn and the Undyed shade. So I think we can finally continue with the colorways. Speaking of saturated colors, let me just jump right in and show you our kind of festive, festive colorway for this year. This one is Cranberry and it looks incredibly orange on camera. I would say it's more of a clear red. Can you see? Maybe like this. It's more like a clear red, festive, very Christmassy kind of colorway, I would say. But yeah, this is Cranberry um, and I love it with Auburn as well. Such a nice and kind of festive combo, I believe. Next up, we have our colorway Oxalis, which is a deep burgundy kind of shade that also looks a bit more orangey close to the camera, but this is more close to it, I would say. It's like a burgundy, burgundy kind of brownish red that I really like, and I think it's also a very festive colorway. Next up, we have Rose Garden, which is a light, warm pink. You can see here very well that the yarn is also grayish in undertone, so it kind of heathers when you dye it. But this is Rose Garden, and it's like a powdery, warm, beautiful pink. This one is our colorway Pumpkin, which is a beautiful rusty orange um, that has been very loved over the past updates um, on our other bases, so I decided to also dye it on roots, but I think it's very nice. It looks so glowy and so golden from this base. It's very, very nice. So this one is Pumpkin. Next up we have our colorway autumn leaves, which is a mustardy kind of yellow, although it turns out a bit more like true golden than on our other bases, with a little bit of a brassy greenish undertone. So I really like that one. Very golden and lovely, I think. Next up, we have our colorway Heather, and this one is something between a pink and a purple, I would say, but very elegant, I think. It's kind of muted as well. Um, and I kind of wanted to include a couple of colder shades as well, so we're not only doing all the reds and pinks. Um, so yeah. Well, pinks, yes, this is kind of a pink, but I wanted to include it to be a bit more colder in undertone. Whew. I'm getting a little warm, to be fair. <laughs> Next up, we have a new colorway, and this one is called Cinnamon. Um, and it's like a warm, rusty orange. Slightly less saturated than pumpkin, if you see them next to each other. So yeah, this one is Cinnamon. Then next up, we have our colorway Bark, which is a relatively neutral, light, warmish brown. Um, but I also think would go so well in a color work with some of our more reddish tones, like this, for example, with Oxalis and Pumpkin would be very, very nice. Next up, we have this new colorway that's called Peach, and it's like a pinkish apricot kind of orange. This game's a bit wonky, excuse me. I'm, <laughs> I've had a little incident yesterday, so, hence the band-aid on my thumb, but I really cut myself in making soup. And yeah, so skeining the last skeins that had to be dry this morning um, was a bit of a challenge. So excuse if they look a little bit more wonky than usual. But yeah, this is peach. And I really like this one as well. I think it would also make a great companion to some of the reddish shades in a colorwork sweater. So yeah, this one, very love this one. Speaking of color work, I think we decided to make another base color that would also go with pretty much everything because sometimes you end up having to choose another color um, that would kind of go with everything and not be in one of the like color families. And that's where these kind of shades come in handy. This one is Hayride and it's a warm, uh, but also kind of neutral beige 
if I hold it back here, you might see better. So yeah, this is also a great base for color work sweaters, I believe. So a bit more warm. If you want, don't want to go with like the undyed um, grays, you can go with this one and then, you know, layer some of the autumnal shades, maybe like this. <laughs> How am I gonna do this? <laughs> like this, maybe? Absolutely in love with these. And last but not least, we have a couple of very limited greens because they are always very hard to dye with natural dyes. Um, but we have this one and it is called Eucalyptus. It's like a bluish, grayish green. Next up, we have Pine Tree, which is a grayish blue dark green. By the way, these are the ones that where, where I mentioned they might crock off a tiny bit, so don't wear something white underneath. And if it crocks off on your fingers, don't worry, you just need to wash your fingers with soapy water and you're done. Um, but yeah, it happens a bit more with this base because it's very minimally processed, so there is still a lot of um, natural oils in it. And so you can kind of, yeah, you can kind of feel that some of the oil is still in there and some of the pigments have... Um, have attached to the oils and that is um, why some of the excess is a bit heavier than on other bases but really don't worry it sounds way worse than it is so this is pine tree and lastly this one is green apple it's one of your favorite shades these kind of medium warmish greens uh, on our other bases so we decided to make it on roots as well I think it's so sweet. It's kind of, you know, giving me all the vibes with the reds. Okay. I don't know if I'm too obvious over here, but this is kind of screaming my name. Anyhow, these are all of the colorways that we dyed on roots. Um, they are all, as I said, very limited and we have them on both of the weights. So this one was all shown on the DK weight, but we all have them all on the fingering weight version as well. So you can choose whatever you prefer. So I guess that is everything we dyed on roots. As mentioned, there is a full video about it. And if you're curious, you can watch that one as well. Um, I think it's very lovely to hear the backstory of a yarn. So in case you're interested about that, I tell a bit more about it in that video. But I guess without further ado, let me share all the colorways that we dyed on over sock with you. As a little recap, our oversock base is a fully uh, non-superwash and plastic-free sock yarn that has been custom spun for us um, with a slightly higher twist for durability and it has a 375 meters per 100 grams. Um, and for this update uh, we dyed quite a bunch of colors uh, just because I also feel like for festive season stuff I always love to have gift knitted socks so in case you're into gift knitting and you need a pair of socks and you know need new yarn for it <laughs> don't we all need new yarn all of the time but yeah then we got you covered um starting off with this one this is hayride um just as I showed you on roots before a nice neutral beige that builds very well for color work bases as well. This is also the colorway that we used um, for last month um, for the little sample of the hot water bottle cover um, by Laura, Laura Penrose. Um, that one was the, how is it even called? Pumpkin spice hot water bottle cover? Anyhow, you all seem to have really loved that one and this was the base color apparently. So in case you wanted to make something similar, this is the base color. Um, Next up, we have cinnamon on overstock as well, so a nice warm orangey tone that I also think is very festive and reminds me of spice mixes for like punch and glühwein and all these kind of things. Next up, we have autumn leaves as well, which is a nice golden yellow that I also think goes very well with a lot of the warm fester shades. Next up, we made another batch because this seems to be very popular every time where you stock it of Auburn, which is a dark reddish brown that 
always turns out a slight bit a bit different every time I dye it. So that's so exciting about natural dyes. You cannot always predict how they turn out. And this batch has turned out a bit more brown um, than previous batches. For example, if you compare it to the batch on roots, this is a bit more reddish. Can you even see? And this one is more brownish. So yeah, the magic of natural dyes, I'd say. So this is Oburn. Next up, we will also restock your very beloved pumpkin on Uberstock, which I think some of you have been requesting since I've last updated it in October for the Quilty Sock Kits that we made. So this is a restock um, available on its own this time. Next up, we have um, Berry Jam, which also turned out a bit different this time. A little more purpley in undertone, I would say, and almost a bit variegated, but I love this batch a lot and I think it's super unique. Um, so yeah, this is Fairy Gem. Next up we have our, a colorway called Iris, and this is more of a less saturated little brother of Fairy Gem. It's a bit more light and not as saturated. So let me see if I can hold them side by side. Yeah, so here you can see. Next up, we have another kind of new shade that I haven't, I don't think I've ever dyed this on Oversock. This one is called Chocolate and it's like a dark reddish undertoned brown. Maybe, yeah, here you can see it a bit better. I think it's quite nice and warm and chocolatey, I guess. <laughs> and then next up we have our colorway green apple also on overstock. Just in case you maybe wanted to knit something green for the festive season in like more of a happy green. Because I feel like this is more of a happy yellowy green. And next up we have this colorway and this one is called Thistle. It's like a yellowy kind of warm green that I also think mixes very well in a color work um, between colder and warmer shades. It's a bit less saturated than green apple. So this is them side by side. And then last but not least, it's not really the last one, but I'm gonna show it to you anyways like this. This is Cranberry on Oversock. Also a bit more like warmish in uh, camera, but I would say it's it's like a true, true uh, Christmassy red. So, and now we're getting to the last colorway that we are restocking, and this has been part of a certain project, which is why I'm sharing it like kind of separately. This is the ca colorway Cardamom, and this is the original colorway that um, I designed for the mystery knit along that I was mentioning earlier. It's like a warm, warm rusty brown um, and this brings me to the topic of the mystery knit along that I should tell you about. So a couple of months ago I reached out to my friend Jona Hurry um, who's a very talented uh, knitwear designer and we luckily got to meet in person um, earlier this year at Uvescola Knit Festival and I kind of wanted to have a new approach to festive projects, let's put it that way, and I reached out to Jona and asked him if he wanted to join me. And he luckily said yes, and we decided to kind of design um, a project that would be not an alternative to an advent calendar, I don't want to say that, but to have a feel of, you know, a special project as a countdown to the end of the year, um, without being like too um, like too spendy or splurgy, if I may say so. So I kind of thought there is so much going on about materialism and buying things you might not need around the festive season, which I'm definitely a huge Christmas fan and I love the festive season, but this is the one thing that I'm sometimes a bit critical about because I don't really think it's nice to buy something because it's on sale even though you don't need it. That's not my approach of sustainability to be fair. And I kind of thought how 
about making something that would be, you know, more of a community driven project. And yeah, that is how the mystery knit along um, idea was born. And it's the first time that we're doing this, like for both of us, it's the first time. So I'm excited to do this, but I um, know the pattern. You will not know it. So it's mystery and you can join the mystery knit along um, and just, you know, knit a sock, um, a sock pattern that it has been exclusively designed for this project and you will not know what you're getting. It's secret and that's the fun of it, of it all. What I can say though is, because I have test knitted the pattern, so I know it, <laughs> um, it's a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece of a pattern that Yona designed. And it has four different clues for each of the Advent uh, weekends. And you will get uh, a new clue every week. So you can then continue knitting on your sock and see it unfurl. And I think this is just so much fun. So for every weekend in December, we have a new clue and then you can continue on your sock so you can have a finished pair by the festive holidays. Um, and yeah, for this one, it was so much fun to knit this. And even though I saw it before, I was still super excited to continue working on it. And I think Yona did an extraordinary job at designing this in a way that it stays really fun as well because every clue has a new element and there is no repeat between the clues so it's not like okay now you're done with the heel and now you just knit, knit the foot or whatever in the same way as the cuff or something every clue has a new pattern and it's so nice it's not necessarily beginner friendly i would say because i think the fact that this is supposed to stay exciting through throughout the uh, four weeks it's running um, actually required a bit more like se to combine several techniques let's let's put it that way and so I would say it's not necessarily a super beginner friendly pattern but if you're up for a little fun challenge this is definitely for you um, we have uh, whoops, sorry the light is going wild um, we had some dedicated yarn boxes for those but they have sold out already however this is the original colorway and you can join the knit along or the mystery knit along um, with stash yarn as well. You don't need to buy new yarn for it. The pattern will also be available individually with the November collection. So you will be able to purchase it from my shop um, as well. And, um, you know, you will ju then just get the clues via email um, on every Friday before the Advent Sundays a lot of info and because it's a lot of info I have summarized everything on a dedicated info page that I made for the mystery knit along so you can inform yourself there and see what you want if you want to join um, if you want to join with stash yarn that's more than welcome um, then you just need to buy the pattern and as mentioned this pattern will also be available through my shop not through Ravelry for the time that the MCAL is running um, just because I need to contact all of you and send you the clues so it has to be kind of one way and yeah it's going to be available with the November collection as well so you can actually buy yarn and pattern in one go and I hope you're going to enjoy this as much as I do. I wholeheartedly invite you to this mystery knit along because it's very fun to make this pair of socks which is named Kura by the way which is the word for frost in Finnish um, resembling Jonas heritage and I think it's very nice and yeah, I hope you feel warmly welcomed and want to join us on this little journey. Um, I hope it's going to be a lot of fun and it has already been a lot of fun to organize everything and to, you know, plan everything. So now I'm just really excited for the kickoff, which is on November 29th, by the way. So that's when the first clue is going to be sent out. Um, and yeah, so far about the MCAL, let me continue showing you more specials for this collection. We have another special for the November collection that's also kind of circling around socks or at least sock yarn because this is also an over sock special and it was kind of uh, an impromptu idea that we had after last month's um, project that was kind of similar was incredibly popular. So um, last month we had a mini skein kit um, with stitch markers and you know some ideas all around it and 
I know that some of you were disappointed that you couldn't get it. And so I kind of was like, okay, um, I'm taking this as a challenge. And it was a very short time frame at the, at the time that um, we had to realize this. And I'm incredibly proud that we managed, but I had a lot of help from my mom who was winding mini skeins like crazy for the past week. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let me share it with you. We have another mini skein kit this time. It's holiday themed. And I also have some things to show to you, but let me show it to you first. So this is the mini skein kit, the gingerbread mini skein set. Let's put it that way. Um, and it features all kinds of traditional festive colors, but with, I would say like my kind of approach. So more muted, a bit more, less bright um, and in a bit more of a, moody sense. So there is a pretty bright but still muted red. There is more of a rusty tone, a gingerbready kind of brown, a beige and a classic white. Um, just because you can mix it with everything and because it features, um, well let's not, not put it that way, it features, but we have a lot of, um, we saw a lot of ideas what you can make with it that would feature a white and so I wanted to include that. But yeah, this is, let me put it a little different because it's kind of hard to hold up. But yeah, this is the gingerbread mini skein set featuring all kinds of festive colors, I would say. Um, and you can make a lot of different combinations with it because what we thought you could do with this um, would be to make Christmas ornaments for your trees if you celebrate Christmas. And we made a few just uh, as inspiration. <laughs> Wait, I think I'm holding this the wrong way around. But look at how cute these are. So yeah, we made Christmas ornaments this time. Uh, little mushrooms, a little sweater. I don't know if you can see the tree over here. Then a little stripy sock. Uh, a heart ornament that seems to be wanting to go the wrong way. Um, then a little stocking, a little white heart. I'm sorry if this is a bit messy, it's a bit hard to show, but little white heart. These are some, somehow kind of my favorites. A little house, a cottage kind of. Then a little mitten and another mushroom. So I'm totally in love with this little ornament garland that we made. And I'm so happy that my mom helped me in making these because I could not have done it myself. Um, with everything that was going on. Um, look at the little sock, it has an actual heel. <laughs> and some embroidery on the little sweater. I think it's just so cute. And um, to inspire you even further maybe, we also have a little um, pattern bundle um, that I also linked down below, um, where you can see different ornament types um, and also even more than the ones I just showed. So there will be even more um, ornaments that you can make with this uh, mini skein kit. Last but not least, um, the mini skein set, that's why I'm saying set and kit and kind of confusing the words, because it's a mini skein set of six 20 gram skeins of our oversock base. Um, but we're including some more things. So it's turning into a kit. <laughs> So that's the set, that's the yarn that is involved, is this mini skein set. And I also made um, some stitch markers and these are so cute. Oops, I think it's not really showing well. Let me try to put them the right way around. But I made stitch markers. And since it's called gingerbread, I wanted them to be gingerbread inspired and look like little gingerbread cookies or plätzchen as we say here in germany <laughs> and i think they are just so cute it's a, it's a little mitten and a sweater with a little color work pattern on it i hand painted all of these 
and then a little sock or stocking if you will so yeah these are the gingerbread um stitch markers and they come with the with the little uh, mini skein set and they will form the gingerbread kit that's why i'm like confusing the words all of the time um but that's not all because we thought if you wanted to make the um ornaments some of them are actually kind of like 3d and they need some stuffing and that's why we had some waste from one of our mills um, that from a fiber that was not able to be spun that was too short and you know that falls out of the carding machine or the combing machine or however you want to call it um, so we are going to uh, give this um, natural wool waste that we actually kept from the mill um, we're gonna give you some of this um, in order to stuff your ornaments um, just so you have the option to actually have a fully natural ornament because I feel like a lot of doll stuffings are actually um, containing some artificial fibers and I wanted to give you another opportunity so this doesn't look very glamorous but I uh, just thought it's a nice idea to make use of the mill waste and you know give you some of that um, for your ornaments to stuff them so yeah this stuffing will also be included in the little kit um, with the mini skeins and the stitch markers I think it turned out so cute I'm just very <laughs> excited myself and um, yeah I hope you will love them as much as I do and the kit will only be available in, um, you know, the pre, pre-thought form. There will not be the um, single components um, available, so there will only be the mini skein kit, um, no, the gingerbread kit. So the mini skein set, the stitch markers, and the the natural wool filling for your ornaments. I hope you're gonna, you're gonna love this as much as I do. I just thought it's so cute, and I thought it's a unique idea too. Not always just think of contrasting heels, cuffs and toes for mini skeins, but actually have them being turned into something else. I'm also thinking of a Maxine hot water bottle cover by Laura Penrose again. Her hot water bottle covers are just so nice and I absolutely love them. So I think I might need to make myself one for the festive season. Anyhow, before I ramble even more, let me get to the last special that we have prepared for this collection. Okay. We're at the last section for this um, preview and that means I'm showing you our festive winter boxes for this year. It has just started to rain cats and dogs outside so I hope it's gonna kind of stay like this so I can start um, keep filming. But I really wanted to show you this year's winter box. Um, as mentioned this is kind of our approach to like a special festive thing that you can treat yourself to if you like to or a friend or whoever you might want to treat to this um, and I always team up with different makers and companies to make this box feel very very special and for this year I decided it to be all themed around um, the scenery of like a wooden cottage um, in the woods um, that would, you know, feel very cozy with a fireplace um, that you can sit by. And, you know, I kind of like this vibe because I also don't like it to be too tight to the holidays because, you know, I want you to use everything that's in the box all year round and not only for the festive season. So, yeah, that was kind of the theme that felt very nice and wintry and cozy um, and inspired by this cottage in the woods theme I teamed up with some lovely makers um, to create this box. So what's in there? Um, first of all there will be yarn obviously <laughs> so let me start with the obvious things and there will be um, a double sock set um, with these exclusive colors it's like a brick uh, pinkish red um, then a dark brown and a beige and this is uh, the yarn that will be in the box um, to knit a pattern that was exclusively designed for the box. Um, this is our oversock base, by the way. And 
The pattern was designed by one of my absolute favorite designers and I'm so honored she said yes when I approached her about it because yeah, I've been wanting to work with her for the longest time and she said yes, so I'm super happy to have featured Ronja Hakalechto's beautiful new sock pattern called Tupa, which is the Finnish word for something like a cottage in the woods. I thought that was very fitting. And this is the pattern. It's a three color, color work pattern. Um, with a super nice kind of flowy repeating rhythm. So there are not a lot of floats to catch or anything. You can just keep going and keep going and it's one of those one more round projects. So this is the pattern that is in the Festive Winter Box this year, designed by the ever so wonderful Ronja Hakalehto from Finland, which is also very fitting because I feel like with the whole setting of the box, that's kind of like how she lives. At least that's what the vibe I'm getting whenever she posts. So I found it very fitting. And these are the Dupa socks that are in the box. So the pattern is included in the box as well. And I'm just so excited. They are very lovely to knit and a lot of fun. And I'm super happy with them. So the featured pattern. Next up, to make your knitting experience even more lovely with uh, this box, we also included some stitch markers and they are handmade and hand painted by Sorella of Where Meadows Grow. She lives in the UK and makes these beautiful stitch markers and they are all hand painted. And as you can see, there is a little cottage in the woods. Isn't this just so cute? I hope you can see despite the glares. But yeah, they have been exclusively designed for the box as well. So yeah, just in case you need a little marker for your sock knitting, we've got you covered as well. So there's a the little starry night, the woods and then the little cottage. And I think it's just so pretty. I'm always so happy to share these kind of things with you because it's just like so special after having worked on this for months. It just feels very, very nice. Following the scenery, we will also include some non-knitting uh, products to elevate the whole theme and, you know, to feel extra special. And the next thing that I can include makes me super happy to share with you as well. Um, this is a handmade, uh, Lino print exclusively designed for the box and it features a little cottage in the woods scenery with like a starry night and the birch trees in winter. These are made by Marta of Lino Rutka, I believe. I, I'm sorry if I'm butchering the username. I'm gonna put everyone involved below by the way. And not only does Marta design all of these beautiful illustrations that she prints and then hand prints them, but she also makes the paper herself from paper waste, which I think is just so cool and very fitting. So yeah, this is the print included. I'm so in love with this. Like It made me squeal <laughs> of happiness when she sent me the first draft. So I feel like this is such a cozy scenery and so the little cottage looks so inviting. I don't know. I just want to get there and kind of sit by the fireplace. Speaking of fireplace and sitting there, kind of, this was a very sketchy thing. But um, I also kind of wanted to include something to uh, elevate the coziness even more. And to do that, I reached out to one of my absolute favorite companies that I actually use in my own home as well. Um, and that is the Botanical Candle Co. And they made these beautiful gift box packaging for obviously a little candle that is also included in the box. Let me just open this with you because it's just so pretty. Um, I just wanted to show you the gift packaging because I, I really wanted to make this in a way that it feels very special. Um, 
And so we went for the gift packaging option. Let me open it up. So there is a little card on how to use the candle inside um, because, you know, burn time actually benefits um, how it burns down. And there is the candle inside. And the scent is super festive to me because it's kind of like a blend. Um, it's It has clementine in it and also I, I think they call it rosewood and clementine and it has a kind of fresh citrusy but also woody note and to me this kind of resembled the scenery so well of having like a festive feel from the clementine type of scent and then the woody notes to resemble the cottage vibes. I just absolutely loved the idea of it and they really really smell super super nice. So the candle is actually, it looked quite small in the packaging but it's quite large and generous in size. So these will last you a while through the holidays if you like and they are in these little amber glass jars and they have the beautiful company print. Um, on the lid, which I think is just so special. And what makes me extra happy is that the label kind of matches the color scheme of the yarn. <laughs> These are the kind of things I'm particular about. I don't know if I'm crazy, but I just love when things just come together in this way. So yeah, this is also going to be included in the box. And yeah, as mentioned, it just smells absolutely divine. And this just screams Christmas to me. The clementine is very much the, the 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 head note, I would say, and then the slight woodiness. It's just, it's wonderful. I love it. I'm gonna keep one for myself. Maybe this one that I just unboxed. <laughs> so yeah, this is the candle that will be included, and then we have one last little thing to finish off the whole scenery and. As we've been like talking about the whole cottage scenery, I only found it fitting to include an actual cottage. Um, these are so cute. These are handmade from uh, stoneware by one of my favorite potters called Ilonka of Rhein Keramik. And I actually own several of her pieces and I actually also own some of her little uh, cottages. And whenever I have posted something where you could see them decorated around my home or the studio, I get comments on these every time. And so I thought I'd reach out to her and have the cottages available with the cottage themed mist, uh, festive winter box. So I thought it's just super nice. Each of these is lovingly handmade. And so I also brought a second one so you can see that they are all different. Some are taller, some are a bit more chubby small ones <laughs> so yeah they vary in size a little bit but that's the beauty of handmade things I believe and they feel so weighty and like really really nicely made and yeah I kind of this kind of finishes off the idea of having things that I genuinely love myself and wanted to bring to you to celebrate the festive season so I hope you love them as much as I do and uh as said, the winter boxes will also be available with the November collection um, launching on the 22nd of November at 8 p.m. CET, which is a bit earlier than we usually go for our last Friday of the month. But since we all know what the last Friday of the month is in November and I didn't want to interfere with that event, <laughs> I decided to uh, launch a bit earlier, which also gives a bit more shipping time for everything to arrive before the holidays. Um, that being said, a little admin um, about shipping and things. Um, we will have to ship things relatively quickly to get it all out before the event that I just mentioned craze. So we will try our best to get everything out as soon as possible. Um, however, I have to ask you, if you would like to purchase one of the festive winter boxes, um, which are relatively limited by the way, because of all the handmade products in there. Um, but I have to ask you to uh, purchase those separately because they will be pre-packed and I don't really have a box size to put the large winter box into another box and have it shipped um, with something else. So 
I'm very sorry for the inconvenience, but I have to ask to order those separately, even though if you would like to purchase something from the collection, just because logistically it would be like slowing me down and causing me a lot of problems to um, combine orders of um, the boxes and other yarn and all these things. So the boxes will be pre-packed just so we can get them out as quickly as possible. According to my carrier, um, the slower parcels, which is usually um, the, the larger ones, which make, doesn't make sense in my eyes, but that's a different story. Um, so the slowest parcels should still arrive if I deliver them to the post office on the 6th of December. However, this is only the official statement and I will not go by it um, by heart because there can always be things and, um, you know, there is always a lot of traffic around this time of year for the carriers. So, yeah, I don't guarantee it, but I will do my very, very best to ship all the orders after the um, launch very quickly and get them out to you. Prioritize the overseas orders as well so you can get those things also before the holidays. Um, but yeah, in order for me to do this, I have to ask you to order the festive winter boxes separately, um, even though you would like to, to order something else from the collection just because I can't um, offer the service of combining things this time. Um, I hope this is okay. I'm very sorry, but I kind of have to stick to my boundaries in this case because it's just too much else. Um, yeah. But that is it about admin. As mentioned, the November collection will go live on November 22nd at 8 p.m. CET. And I'm incredibly excited about this one. I hope you are too. And let me know what you prefer. Oh, one more thing. Because it's, again, a lot of info and a lot of, you know, launch dates with the MCAL, with um, the mini gingerbread mini skin kits, with the festive boxes, that I have um, set up another info page with all the info summarized, with the pricings, with uh, dates, availabilities, and all these things. So I have summarized everything on that info page and also linked down below, just in case you wanted to double check something. So I guess now I'm done with the admin section and thank you so much if you've been sticking around until now. I know it has been a longer episode again, but yeah, I guess there is a lot to show. <laughs> I'm so excited for this new collection and I hope you are too and I guess until next time I'll see you soon and happy knitting. Bye!